Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. Welcome back to the Stogie Geek Show, episode 213 for this Monday, December 12th, 2016. Also, happy uh, birthday to Frank Sinatra. Who turned 101? Would have been 101 years old today. Um, be sure to check out uh, our Stogie Geeks tribute we did to Frank Sinatra um, on episode 167 last year for his 100th birthday on a Debonair Ideal segment. But I'm here in Studio C in North Carolina. We have uh, the best production team in the business, Mark, Riley, and Tyler, at the Villager North America Studios in Rhode Island, keeping things flowing. And we're joined today by uh, Ben Lee and Jason Loyce, uh, who are uh, our guest hosts tonight. And we're in our Debonair Ideal segment. And uh, Ben and Jason, just what we do with this particular segment, it's a cigar lifestyle segment, but we try to kind of connect this with more of the positive things that are happening uh, from the cigar experience. And when I kind of was going through some topics, uh, you know, one thing that I think was interesting in having two different co-hosts on tonight from different locations is, and we've all traveled, all three of us, we've lived in places we traveled, is there's a lot of great cigar cities. And some of these cigar cities, I think, stand out for a variety of different reasons um, where, you know, there's just, there's a city you can go to and make almost, if you, if you're really, if you could actually get the time away from the family, you could actually make a cigar vacation out of it. Um, so I thought we'd talk a little about what, what some of those are tonight. Um, you know, I'll kind of give my main one in a little bit, but you know, the interesting thing is working with Paul up in Rhode Island, um, you would not believe, but I would say uh, if you went to Warwick, Rhode Island, um, there is some great cigar shops there. Um, the two, you know, you've heard us talk about the two that come to mind. Um, Mr. J's over in uh, West Warwick. Uh, yeah, everyone knows Stogie Santa from that shop. Uh, great shop. And then there's the Havana Cigar Club, which is actually next door to the studio. You know, I can, when I go up to Rhode Island, um, I just sometimes want to hit those shops all day, not even deal with Paul. I mean, it's like, <laughs> Paul, you got other work to do? Great. I can just go smoke. Yeah. Um, so I, I love, go I usually I try to make an extra day up there. I'll like crash at Stogie Santa's house or something and I'll get to do that. And then Paul can deal with, uh, you know, his other business or his, you know, his family, which is good. But yeah, I get the time with Paul, but I, I actually really like doing that. Um, Jason, I'll kind of start out with you. What are, I mean, you've, you've been a national sales manager, you know, you, you live in a great cigar area uh, of Louisville um, as well. What what is like what is a good cigar city you hit? Uh, there's there's so many. Um, and some great shops that start nation here. Um, my favorite one will be in Nashville. Uh, Nashville is one of one of my favorite cities, uh, um, but uh, Smokers Abbey is is one of my uh, my favorite shops down there in Nashville. Um, it, they got some great guys. They got great cigars. Uh, fantastic customer service and and just a a, a, gr a great bunch of guys. Um, Cincinnati area has some uh, fantastic uh, venues. Uh, you got the Party Source that every Tuesday they have uh, between 150 and 200 people uh, for a, uh, for an event, and, and they do amazing events. They did great events for me while while I was uh, on the road, uh, and they treated me uh, amazing, and uh, really got the name out there uh, for me. Um, then you got Jungle Gyms just north of them. Uh, 
actually the the last crossfire event that I did for Jungle Gems, we had the second most uh, sales uh, just behind Drew Estate. Uh, and that's that's saying something for a small boutique to kind of be up there uh, amongst that kind of ilk uh, of companies um, when you're talking about event sales. So, uh, yeah, those those are uh, a few just to kind of name some some uh, regional around here shops. Um, Richmond, Virginia is a, a real good spot, too. There's a hotbed there. There's tons of of great cigar lounges in that area. You know, Jay, I used to spend a lot more time in uh, the Richmond area, and there was Havana Connections. There was there's an old Virginia has a shop in, in Richmond I'd hit because it was close to the highway. When I drive back to Charlotte, I'd stop there. Um, there's a few others, but I agree. Richmond, uh, that's actually where General Cigar is uh, headquartered, too, but uh, very, very underrated, I think, in terms of if you're uh, if you're looking for a place to stop for a cigar, particularly if you're driving down I-95, which is the main artery on the East Coast, uh, and Richmond's kind of right in the middle of that uh, that drive. Um, there are some very, very good places you can hit there. Yeah, I apologize. My internet connection seems like it's popping in and out here, so. Uh... I don't know if I paused or anything during my little my little rant there, so I apologize no, I, for that I, if I did. I, I heard it. I think I heard it. Yeah, I think we heard it. Um, ben, how okay, about you? Good. Well, <clears throat> most of my you know cigar travels really kind of deal in the southeast area. Um, uh, well, you know my, my home shop right here in Biloxi, the cigar shop. I mean that that's a it's a great shop too. I mean it's a huge shop, great selection, and they have some really fun events. Like uh, this Friday, we had a uh, Perdomo event, which actually was, it was a big Lebowski event. And come in as dress as one of the you know the characters you can you know you want you want a prize from Perdomo. It was put on by Chris Harper, their national sales manager, who was an outstanding guy. Um, so I really love this shop. I mean, this is my home. Um, and since I've moved to Houston uh, in May, you know, Houston's got a ton of great places to smoke. Um, you have Stogie's World Class. It's up, you know, on the Westheimer Road near the Galleria Mall. That's it, it, That shop is unbelievable, gorgeous. Great selection. You know, all the people there are really awesome. Um, they have a private side that's just stunning. They even they, they every time they, for what I was people were telling me, whenever they have a small shop next to them closed down, they actually buy that and expand it out. And they've actually bought like, um, if I remember, it was like a jewelry store. It was ironic because this used to be a jewelry store at this shop, but they actually turned the vault where they used to store the jewelry into a conference room. <laughs> And it's got the huge vault door and everything. It's really awesome. So if you want to have a private meeting, but you want to have a smoke cigars, you know, like a company meeting, you can actually go in there and have a meeting. It's really cool. Um, they have, of course, you have serious cigars there. They have, uh, you know, they just got bought out by Altadis. So they're, you know, Casa de Monte Cristo shops now. But they actually opened up one uh, in south of Houston, like in the Clear Lake Webster area where I live at, near NASA. Uh and, you know, Billy Mitchell runs that and does an outstanding job there with all the guys there, Nanny Carl and stuff. They, that's a great shop and private lounge there, too. It's got 24-hour access. And then I have the smoke ring, which I go to a lot. It's literally a mile from my house there. And it's, it's a great shop. They have a lot of boutiques. And they're really smart about the boutiques. They bring in really good stuff. Like, you know, there's a, there's a lot of cigars out. There's a lot of trashy stuff out there. But they real select about what they bring in. So they got some really good boutiques there. So if you're looking for something that that offbeat stuff, they're pretty much going to have it. And plus, they have their owner does a select coffee blend that he made himself with a, a roaster in Pearland, Texas, and they have that for free. And it's amazing. I go there for coffee just, just to get the coffee I pair a cigar with. So Houston has a great is a great town. Not to mention, there's a lot of you know cigar friendly uh, areas that are, uh, you do know, like you know coffee shops or restaurants that will still allow you to smoke I mean you can go out on the patio and they don't care you smoke all you want there's no you know regulations or nothing like that so that's really cool you know like New Orleans I'm so close to New Orleans you know because I was born and raised in the Mississippi Gulf Coast we're about I know I'm about an hour hour and a half from New Orleans you know and I, there's some great shops like like Crescent City cigar. That's like my second home over there. I mean, I, I love that shop. Um, 
great selection there too. And it's right off of the uh, Bourbon Street. But I mean, I'm not a big drinker, but I mean, or party or any of that stuff. But this right there. So if you're out in that area, it's you know a great stop. And you got Mayan, and you also got uh, uh, who was there? You got Donling Ancios, which is right off of Canal Street. You got yep. a lot of good cigar shops. Havana Port up in Metairie now. That's a really good shop. I mean, but the thing is, they you know, the city of New Orleans has gone so anti-smoking that you really can't go anywhere but a couple of these shops to go smoke now. That's a big problem. So I don't go over there as much anymore. And then another one I go to a lot over in Destin, Florida, Harbor Cigars. Destin, Harbor Cigars, you know, that is an amazing shop. They have a ton of stuff. You know, their TAA uh, store, so they have a lot of the TAA stuff, which I like. And amazing selection, really good prices there, too. They have a, they're right next to a huge wine store, too, that has a restaurant in it, and the food is freaking amazing. The same with Crescent City Cigar Dorans. They're right next to this bistro that has amazing food. So you get a cigar and amazing food at the same spot, you know, have an awesome bottle of wine out right there on the balcony or um, on the patio at, I mean, um, at Harbor Cigars in Destin. And it's just an amazing atmosphere. Plus Destin is just, just incredibly beautiful too. And uh, most of the area of Destin is pretty cigar friendly too. But, uh, you know, Marvin that owns that shop has done an amazing job there. And then, you know, of course, Atlanta, I mean, we probably all know how awesome Atlanta is. Great shops there. You know, a lot of it's cigar friendly. Um, another one, uh, Tupelo, Mississippi has uh, Spring Street Cigars, which has got it like an almost, it's like an old world feel. They bought this um, the part of a building. It's a really old building. I think it was uh, built in the late 1800s. And it still kind of left it where it kind of looks rustic in there. And so it's got an amazing atmosphere. You know, they got a great selection. They have, you know, big events uh, there, and it's a good beer town, too. So they have a lot of um, beer events with their at their cigar shop. And then upstairs, they have, like, a, a bar, a beer bar up there, too. And it's amazing. And Tupelo is a really good uh, cigar, very cigar-friendly town and beer-friendly town, too. So that meshes really well there. Um, I haven't been to Nashville, like what Jason said, but I heard it is absolutely amazing up there, too. Um, I've been to Dallas. Dallas has got a really, you know, that, a really good the shops, a lot of shops there. You know, and it, every, I kind of try to keep up with the Texas reps. I don't really don't know a whole lot of them yet because I just moved there. But when I <laughs> we're friends with on Facebook, they're always clustered in, in Dallas. You know, so I mean that's a really good cigar shop, good cigar town too. But uh, that's a lot of good places in the South, man. There's a lot of good places. Yeah, I mean, I. Uh... Although I have not been to Houston as a serious cigar, I should not use the word pun, but when I last time I was to Houston, I wasn't as deep into cigars as I've been because it was more than ten years ago. And and I will be driving to Vegas this year, and I think I got to go make that stop into Houston. It didn't work out time wise for me last year because uh, I have to go down to I ten to do that. But I really want to get into Houston. I've been to Dallas several times. I get to Atlanta a lot. Um, I'm gonna turn. You know, the, the, yeah, Atlanta's tons of cigar shops in Atlanta. You have no problem finding a place to smoke in Atlanta. Uh, and you can smoke at some of the bars and restaurants uh, in Atlanta as well. The place I like to go to, and I just I used to get up there every month. Uh, I don't have that luxury anymore of doing that, but it, it's Chicago. And I, I would actually establish a, a routine going to Chicago. Um, I would fly in the night before into O'Hare. And I would rent a car, and I'd first go to Casa de Monte Cristo. They're open, they're open nice and late. Um, mm-hmm. yep. and, and, and Casa de Monte Cristo, unbelievable place. Um, they, great shop, tons of selection, a vintage room. You're going to drop some coin there if you're a cigar geek. There's no question about it. Um, I would then drive to Chicago, and uh, I'd wake up very early. And, I mean, when I say early, I'd wake up about... 5.30, get something to eat, and then I go over to Jack Schwartz, uh, which is wo- located by the Chicago Stock Exchange. They're open at 7 a.m. I wow. get a smoke. I make sure my hotel was strategically close to there. I grab a smoke at Jack Schwartz, 
go back to my hotel, shower, and then go do my meeting things, whatever. Um, and then I had, you know, I had some other options to go to. Uh, usually I go down to E1 Reese, which is one of the oldest tobacconists. It's located on the loop right by where the elevated trains are. Um, their lounge, you literally see the trains come right next to the lounge. It's really cool because the lounge is elevated. Um, I, I, I sometimes would get to Up, Down, and Tessa, but not too often. I tend to go to E1 Reese. And then when I'd fly out, uh, I'd make sure I get a late flight out of Chicago, get the last flight out of Chicago, go back to Casa de Monte Cristo, and, and kind of finish up there. So Chicago was a great, when I was going there every month, it was, it was, I was able to get that routine down and I missed that a lot. Yeah. I've only been to Chicago. You missed my favorite one. Which one? Biggs mansion. I never got there. That's shame on me. Everyone's oh. coming. And I've heard, oh, I never goodness. got there because of the way. Yeah. And I've heard you so many good go things about Biggs. that. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely need to go to Biggs. Uh, at any given time, you can be smoking a cigar with Steve Harvey or, or MJ or one of those big time Chicago celebrities. And uh, it's, it's a fantastic place. Fantastic place. Yeah. That's the cool, that's the cool thing about two of the shops I go to a lot. Crescent City Cigar in New Orleans and Buckhead Cigars in Atlanta. I swear to God, it seems every time I'm in there, a celebrity comes in. Especially Crescent City because there are so many people are filming in New Orleans. And they'll come in there and they'll buy cigars, you know, and you're like, oh, my God, is that such and such? And, you know, it's just it's wild who you run into. Especially, you know, Buckhead. You know, Buckhead's, you know, cigars, obviously it's a Buckhead. Mm-hmm part of Atlanta and it's attached to Dantana and what's cool is you could actually be in the cigar shop and actually get served through from Dantana Steakhouse in the shop which is really cool and uh but yeah they have a lot of people coming there too a lot of celebrities it's crazy who, who you'll run into in some of these shops you know who was who like the biggest celebrity you smoked with Ben <sighs> let's see Trying to think, I missed Charles Barkley by a few minutes. Actually, a Buckhead. Um, we had. I remember one day sitting there in, in Crescent City Cigar, and the guy that played the mob boss of Sopranos for the New York Mafia, the one that had the. Um, I can't remember what his name was because I wasn't that big of a Sopranos fan. Jo- Johnny but, Sack, the guy who played Johnny Sack. Yes, he came in yeah. there. Um, Matthew McConaughey is always in that area. He's always he goes to Mayan in there. Um, Brad Pitt every now and then. I, I never saw him in there, but I heard he's you know he's coming a couple times at Crescent City Cigar. You know, Sylvester Stallone. Um, oh man, <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty wild. I mean, it's, there's just so many people coming to New Orleans, especially the film industry. You know, especially when they have the Super Bowl too there. You know, or the like the NBA All Star Game. You know, a lot of those athletes come in there too. You know, it, it's so. You know, there's, it, but just because where Crescent City Cigar sits at, it's real close to the Superdome and the Smoothie King Center where the Pelicans play at. So, you know, that they get a lot of influx of people there. Plus, a lot of people that you know, New Orleans kind of want to be, maybe not exactly in the, you know, you know, the uh, on Bourbon Street in the French Quarter, but they'll have like a little apartment or something near there. So they're always coming through there. So it's kind of like, you know, a, a good stop for them. So it's really cool, man. It, it's it's wild. You know, telling who you're going to see, especially, you know, there's a cool, you know, because it's right up between Bourbon Street and the Cathedral, and which is, you know, your two biggest tourist stops. So that street is Orly Street where they're on. So just sitting sitting in the, in the little lounge area, looking out the window, you'll see all kinds of people go by, you know, even if they don't even come in the shop. It, it's, it's wild, you know. New Orleans is a unique place. How about you, Jason? How about who have you kind of run into in the cigar lounge? You know, uh, not really celebrities per se, um, more pro and, and college athletes, um, which I, you know, I, I love because I'm a, I'm a big sports uh, fanatic. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And a group of, of guys that uh, it's it's not uncommon to uh, to be smoking a cigar with, uh, you know, an NBA player. Uh, or NFL player or former NFL or NBA or, or big time college ball player that maybe doesn't play ball anymore. So, but yeah, no, no movie stars, no, no, uh, no 
a big time star like, like Ben here. Apparently he's a he's a celebrity uh, catcher. Um, but uh, I, I did smoke a cigar with this famous famous guy, uh, Will Cooper. You ever heard of him? He's a uh, fantastic. Does this podcast? It's really great. You know, Seth from Seth Humidor Cigar Federation last week. I met him up in Greensboro, and I don't. He, somehow there was someone who wanted a picture taken with me. Right. It, it turned out it was a friend of a friend. It wasn't any. He puts this picture up of me. Right. Um, basically, look, he's getting, he's, people are asking him for, it wasn't the case. <laughs> they, look, they want a photo op with him. Uh, that's, I'm not, I, I am definitely not a celebrity. Um, uh, it's, it, that was a little surreal, but it, of course he puts that up down dressed like a bum, which is why I'm wearing the sport jacket tonight. Uh, but, um, I'll give you, I'll give you my, uh, actually I happen to smoke with Mike Piazza. Uh, oh, Mike's a great guy. Uh, this was in New York when I was living in New York. Um, Mike came in. I smoked with him. He's a very, uh, very open guy. Talked a lot about his career. That was very, very interesting to hear about. You know, just some of the managers he played with that we liked and disliked. He was pretty open on that. I did meet Rudy Giuliani in Dallas. Uh, at oh, cool. uh, it was up in smoke. He was in there, and no one recognized him in the lounge. So he comes into the lounge. Uh, with two guys, uh, and he's wearing a golf shirt, sunglasses, and a ball cap. And basically, there were two guys who were probably bodyguards sitting around him. Again, they were just dressed in golf gear. You didn't really know. And we're talking to Giuliani, and the, and the uh, Yankees were playing the Texas Rangers, I think, at that in that game. It was in the playoffs, and he was watching it. And uh, finally, he takes the sunglasses off, and we realized who we were talking to. We didn't know it was him at all. Um, so that was that was an interesting nice. – um, that was an interesting uh, experience. So uh, the the third guy, he's not as big a name, but uh, Matt Doherty, the um, the former coach at the University of North Carolina, is a cigar enthusiast. Uh, he comes to Charlotte from time to time and has smoked. Uh, and he pop, he used to work for ESPN in Charlotte, and he'd come in and bef- while he's doing his game prep uh, for the show, he would uh, he would come in and smoke a cigar. So that was pretty cool as well. Um, so that was, that was interesting. You know, I got, I got to Ben, the Crescent city cigar. Is that the place that has the Elohio cigars? Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, that's the one I've been to. Yeah. So yeah, I know that place. Yeah. Uh, and I've been there. So yeah, I was, I was it kind of just clicked all of a sudden with that. Um, so yeah, a lot and of, a lot of, what yeah, about not celebrities, but your famous cigar celebrity, your, your, the, your favorite cigar that you smoked with. How about you, Ben? That I've had the most fun with hanging out? Yeah, yeah. We, uh, <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. We had Matt Booth here one time in, a, in the cigar shop here in Biloxi. And right. we had a blast. And we had a lot to drink. And <laughs> he went, he was, he's something else. He's he's a hilarious guy. He, he saw all of a sudden developed this Russian accent. Started talking like he was from Russia. And he, or the... The well, cigar shop manager here, Roger, <laughs> they started, he started this, I don't know, I don't even know what you would call it, but they started just goofing off and stuff, and he kept talking like Borat to him and stuff, and gave him a new nickname, they called him Buttermilk, and that stuck with the shop, everybody in the shop calls you Buttermilk now, but he went on, I mean, I don't know, we went on for like two to three in the morning, and he, he was something else. He was hilarious, you know. Of course, JD, JD's always a hoot to deal with, too. You know, he's been here before too, and it was that was it was a pretty it was a blast too. But you know, we had a lot of you know a lot of the it's a lot of good cigar you know people in the cigar industry. You know, so I mean it's probably with too much. Of course, anytime you know Pete Johnson, you know you talk about a storyteller, Pete can tell a story, and it's it's I mean amazing storyteller. But, oh yeah, oh yeah. Especially when you drink a bourbon in Nicaragua, <laughs> it's. Get some good stories. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of good people, man. I mean, it, that's a good thing about the cigar industry. You know, it's kind of like a, you know, it's a pretty big family. So, you know, usually most people, you know, it's a good time when everybody gets together. Yep. Um, I'll give you mine. So I'll kind of go two ways. Uh, I'll kind of go to fun. Well, both were fun, but they were different experiences. Um. I've gone down to Miami a few times. I've spoke with Jack and Hector Alfonso from um, 
Espinosa cigars, and they're in one of the best uh, Caribbean cigars is where they're in Miami, which is probably one of the only true boutique cigar shop in Miami. It's, it's I always say it's the official cigar coop. Uh, store in Miami that I go to, uh, and and those guys just let loose in the lounge. You know, they're they're you, 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 if you know Hector, and obviously we just had Jack on. You know what their personalities are. They kind of just let loose in the lounge. So you're gonna have an awesome time. They're there quite a bit, um, as far as that goes. Now on the other side of the coin, on a little more of a serious one, um, I was at the uh, Chattanooga tweet up a couple of years ago, and uh, Paul Palma from Casa Fernandez was there. And I, I had met Paul once before, and we actually hit it off very well. But I spent quite a bit of time with Paul at the tweet up, um, and got to know him. And uh, Paul is just a he's a wealth of knowledge. He'll pick your brain on stuff. Uh, he'll he'll mess with me a little. And, and the the funniest story I'll tell is. Um, if folks know Casa Fernandez and my father's cigars have had a little bit of a split over the years, um, so. They've gone their separate ways, but Paul would pick my brain, and uh, he so he goes to me, what did you think of Pete Johnson's Tatawahe TAA 2013, which happens to be made by my father? And I'm like, oh, shoot, I really like that cigar, right? So I, so I basically, I'm not going to say I hate the cigar, right? So I started talking about it, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I've had that cigar. It's, I, I tell you, there were some things I really liked about it. It's... it's I'm, I'm dancing around the question. Paul Paul looks at me and he goes, "You liked it, didn't you?" And I'm like, "Yeah." He goes, he winks at me. He goes, "I really liked it too." <laughs> so, so yeah, I didn't expect that answer out of him. That's cool. Yeah, I, there actually is one serious one that I've got too, and it's I don't I I'm not a person that gets all struck with with, with celebrities or, or any of that type of people, you know, because we're all we're all the same, you know. I I don't I just don't yeah, get like oh we all put God. our underwear on, we put our underwear on the same as anybody else. Yeah, exactly. But there yeah. was this time that I was like, uh, you know, but that was I was actually flew to New York with the um, owner of this shop, Paul Bertuzzi, and we went up there for the Nicaragua leaf for Davidoff, and anyway, we you know. We're actually going around. We fly in. We're in the Manhattan. And then we go visit the Madison Avenue shop, which is an amazing, amazing store. And then we go to Columbus Circle when it was there and hang out there for a while. Then we ended up at De La Concha when it was, when it was De La Concha. You know, we, me and we go in there. We get a cigar, you know. And I don't know if, if either one of you have ever been there, but De La Concha is a huge store. And they have uh, these, you know, whole wall. I forgot what road it's on, but it's right off of Central Park, and they got this Seventh, big wall. Seventh Avenue, window. Seventh Avenue, yeah, yeah. So on Seventh Avenue, see, they got this huge wall of windows, and kind of the thing is, you go get a cigar, and there's the seats are right against the window, so you go there, you kind of people watch because you know New York, just all kinds oh, of yeah. types of people by, right? So we're sitting there, and we look at, coming down the road, and here comes you know uh, Jeff Stone. Uh, brand manager for Davidoff, in, you know, for the U.S. and Hinky Killer. I'm like, oh my god, they're coming in here. They come in, uh, they go pick out something, they go to the register, buy it, and then they come over and they're like, hey, can we sit down with y'all? I'm like, I'm like, sure, <laughs> you can sit out right here if you want to. You know, Hinky gets down. He's got it. He bought a ten of the little uh, Primeros, the little bitty tin uh, Davidoff smokes, and they're Maduros. And he's like, you know, hey, Ben, which I can't believe you knew my name, first off. And he hands me a Primera and said, would you like a cigar? I'm like, yes, sir. And I'm already, I, I had just lit one up, but I kind of just pushed it to the side, you know. I'm like, mm, okay, I'm not smoking that. So I started smoking, and he just starts talking to me like, you know, just a normal person. I don't know what I was expecting, honestly, but I was I was kind of awestruck. And I think he, he got up for a minute, went to the bathroom. I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe Hickey Kellner's, you know, sitting here with us having a cigar. This is, like, awesome. So he said, you know, what, Paul, the owner here, he's like, hey, you ought to get an interview with you. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of a big deal, you know. And he comes back, and Jeff, has his, you know, Jeff says, hey, you know, Hickey, would you mind have been interviewed you for, you know, for a uh, sugar review? And he's like, no, of course not. So I go there, and I'm interviewing him. I got my flip cam, and I'm, I'm sitting there talking to him, answering all my questions, and I didn't screw it up at all, which is amazing. I didn't screw that up. And, you know, get at the end, I'm like, you know, thank you, Mr. Kellner. I really appreciate you taking the time for us. And as I'm about to hit the off button, my battery died on my flip cam right at the moment I was ending that. So I, I got oh. a great 
with him. No, I got it. I got it. It, it saved it. I got, I, it. I got a great interview with him that we put up on Stugger Review. And that, and, you know, a few minutes later, he was done. He Then they left. But, like, that is, like, you know, like, my to me, my top moment. And I got some, you know, for what I got to interview with him, but just to be able to sit down one-on-one with him and was able to talk, you know, just cigar stuff with him. Because to me, just getting any little information from him is like a huge win for me, you know, getting some knowledge. And of course, you know, a couple of years later, I've actually went down to Davidoff on their, you know, their, their trip for the factory going around with the, you know, cause I'm kind of an unofficial employee of the shop. So I went down to Davidoff, the DR. And of course he was there with his son, Klaus Peter, who was, a, who was awesome as well. He's yep. got to hang out with him a lot there, but still, I, even though when I was there with you for days, I was still, you know, like a little puppy thinking, wow, man, this is awesome. I just try to absorb as much knowledge as I can because this man knows so much, you know. So that's my serious story of, you know, not just fun. I, I got, but uh, Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. Before I get to Jason, Stace Berkland, who's in the uh, Facebook, Facebook room, he reminded me of a big one that I missed, and it was Mike Ditka uh, oh, in, Ve- in Vegas at the IPCBR. So um, basically what happens is um, – Stace and I knew the uh, the Camacho rep, um, who was like escorting uh, Mike Ditka around, and uh, we you know we got over there, we got a photo op with him, and, and uh, you know just wanted to introduce ourselves. And he was over at the Davidoff kiosk at the um, Palazzo, and then they inv- but we didn't expect this part. They invited us to um, to sit with them, and um, yeah, sure. So we got, hey, we're going to get to sit with Ditka, right, and everything. So we're sitting with Ditka and we're smoking, and I don't know how it happened, but he goes, um, I, I don't know, the subject came up about size of cigar smoking. And Mike <clears> turns <throat> to me. He looks at me. He takes his, and he's got big hands, Mike. He points his finger at me, and he says, I don't care what anybody says. I like big ring gauge cigars. <laughs> and I looked up and said, yeah, I like them too, Mike. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he was emphatic about that. I guess he was hearing stuff that people were bashing big ring gauge cigars. And he likes those big ring gauge cigars. Like, so, yeah, that was a st- – I'm glad Stace reminded me of that one. Uh, I wanted to get that. Uh, Jason, how about you? You kind of uh, – you kind of – Yeah, um, through my travels, being the face of a, of a brand, um, obviously I've been blessed. Uh, I've been able to sit down and have a cigar, or have a conversation with many uh, brand owners, uh, ambassadors, reps uh, over the years. Um, I've had the opportunity of sitting down with Hanky Kilner Sr. and being in the tobacco era, the owner's lounge in Santiago uh, in the Dominican and, and talking about blend profiles and smoking a cigar. Um, but the one that I want to tell you about and the one that kind of made me awestruck is, is one that uh, people may not recognize the name, um, but the guy has been a staple uh, in the industry for 45 years. Uh, and that's George Brightman. Um, oh, is he? You, know, you guys have had him on Stogie Review, right, Ben? Yeah, he was actually um, kind of a guest contributor for a while for us, too. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was awesome. Really awesome. He, he is amazing, amazing person. Um, he actually sought me out at the DC tweet up, and uh, I imagine my, my jaw probably dropped. Uh, he, he reached out from the crowd and, and shook my hand and said, uh, Hey, Jason, it's nice to meet you. My name's George Brightman. And I kind of looked at him like, Yeah, I'm, I know who the heck you are. Um, you know, be, because uh, of the position that I was in, I looked to other guys like uh, Pete Johnson and, and, and others of that ilk and saw the interview. The, right. the store in Bethesda. And um, it, so to have him come to me and, and want to acknowledge it was, was fantastic. I was very thankful. And and blessed for that uh, for that opportunity and uh, a wealth of somebody that knows so much about cigars and, and somebody that has given back to the industry because, you know, because his knowledge to so many other people. So yeah, a fantastic and, and one of the struck uh, moments. I 
I've met um, George one you time. get all that? Yeah, I think we got most of it. He did break up a little. Um, but, yeah, I've met – he's a wealth of knowledge, Jason. Um, I met him once in uh, Draper's. This is probably about five years ago. Uh, the guy has got an incredible amount of knowledge. If you've seen the work that he's done on Stogie Review, um, he is one – now that he is one of the best interviewers out there as well um, that I've, right. I've seen. I mean, he is a – rock star when it when it he's like that bob costas interview he could do um right and you, all the, what, the interviews with him and pete back in the day um where you know pete uh, basically puts it out there and says hey you know i i learned a lot from george um i'm i'm who i am today because of a lot of things that i learned from george and and i guarantee if you pulled uh other uh industry owners uh such as uh, such as pete you, you'd find that a lot of other people had that same experience yeah, yeah I, but for us several times for for stug review and also lito gomez too he, he's done he's well, for one besides being you know that's like a cigar guide but he's an amazing interviewer too i mean it's yeah. awesome yeah, that's what I was saying. He uh, he's like that Bob Costas where he could do that long interview and he he knows so much history of the brand that that it becomes a very very high quality interview that that he gets out of the person he's interviewing. Yeah. It's yep. true. Yep. Uh, one other one I was thinking of too talking about cigar knowledge, getting it. Um, and I just because I lit up his cigar, I, I'm smoking up me Carita right now, but it's Steve Saka. I mean, every time that you know we do interview with him, or we you know we sit around with him, you know we go do you know cigar safari. Man, you learn so much from him. You know, both him and Jose Blanco, both of them. I love sitting down with them because you learn so much because their wealth of knowledge is just immense, and I love just absorbing it like a sponge. And I got to stare like a you know little schoolboy, listening to the teacher and not saying a word, and I'm happy just to hear them go on and on about all kinds of stuff dealing with cigars. You learn so much, so I love sitting yeah. with those guys. You know, Ben, I think we were on a cigar safari once. You were on this one with me, and it was the last night, and I had a migraine like right around dinner. So I was I was not in good shape, right? And you guys were all going out to Cigar Zone, which is the nightclub. Were you on that trip? Did you ever no. go to the cigar? Was that your trip? No, I didn't go on that one. But I know okay, what you're so talking there, about. yeah, so there was a bunch of guys at anyway that were they went they went to Cigar Zone. Uh, there were three of us to stay. I couldn't go because I was recovered from the headache at that point. And I wasn't, and that's not really my thing. Um, and then it was Dave Lafferty and Steve Saka. That was the first time I got to know Steve, and it was very, very interesting to say. I, I had, I had talked to Steve before, but that's when I got to know him on a one-on-one -on -one basis after that. And, and I, I totally agree with you, as far as that goes. Yeah, yeah. yeah Steve is like, he's one guy that will, I will allow to bust my balls. <laughs> you know, he gets yeah. away with it. Oh, I don't. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jose's a great, I've gotten to know Jose too. I'm very fortunate that I've gotten to know Jose. Um, so he's another one. Yeah, he will. And he's another one who'll pick your brain to try to yeah. get information, which I really respect. Anyway, let's, uh, I think this was a really good segment. Um, what I'd like to do is we'll take a short break and then we're going to come back with uh, Ben, Jason, and myself. Stogies of the week or whatever stogies we want to talk about. So stay tuned. 